All right, blowing the dust off my glasses. I got the Dean Shire over here. Last video, I ended up polishing it up and tightening up a few things that were loose on it. Today, I'm going to start the setup of it. So right now, I've got the strings on it. They need to watch me restringing it, not a big deal. And how I stretch my strings is basically I'll put my hand on top of the fretboard, grab the string, pull, grab string, pull, grab string, pull, grab, and I'll do this to all six strings. As long as it's got six strings on it. If it's got four strings on it, then it'll be four strings. But this has got six strings on it, so that's what I did with it. All right, so what I'm going to do is the neck has already had time to set with the new strings on for probably about three days now. Uh, I've been meaning to do a video as far as doing a setup on this, but uh, other things came up and I was busy doing other things. So what I'm going to end up doing now is I'm going to end up using the new tool for uh, neck relief and compare it with the feeler gauges that I normally would use for setting up neck relief. So I'm going to use this. This is machined. You can see and tell it's been machined. It's very lightweight. It's made out of aluminum. Uh, it works pretty good. I mean, I used it to straighten out the neck and it seemed to straighten out the neck pretty nice. So what I need to do is I need to set this to inches and re-zero it out. So I'm going to set this down on a flat surface. Make sure it is a flat surface. Zero it. It's already set for, oh, I don't want millimeter, I want inches. Alright, set, turn on. Set for inches. Make sure it's zeroed out. Alright, so let's go ahead and check this out. So what you want to do is get this to be between the two strings, which works out pretty good. Make sure you don't have your strings underneath anything or even underneath. So let's see what we got here. So it's telling me that I'm set at approximately nine thousandths. So let's put this up in playing position here and see what I got. So it's telling me I got 10,000, so oh, that's back, it's at 8,000, so I want at least 12, 12 to 10, 9,000, 10 right on the marker. So as it sits right now, it's telling me I am at 10,000, so what I want to do is take this off, put my capo on the first fret, Grab my ten thousandths shim. Which I can go with eh, either or the gold or the silver one. I'll go with the silver one. Fret this puppy and let's see what it is. Damn, that's right on there. Well, if she does do what she's supposed to do. So this does work. All right, now, so I got my neck where I want it to be at a 10,000 relief. Now I want to check the action height on this thing. I want to lower the action on this. Because I can already tell that it's pretty high. All right. So right now, this is showing me I am at ooh, 760 forts. Yeah, I don't like that. And the high E is approximately in between 760 forts and 332s. I do not like that. This has got to go down. So what I want to set this to is I'm using a screwdriver. That does not fit the bridge, so I need to get a smaller one. All right, so this should work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this down quite a bit, and then I'm going to have to. 
After loading it down, I'm going to have to basically bring it up, retune it. See where I'm at right now. So I'm at 560 forts and I am at a 16th. So I'm going to go ahead and retune this because this thing is going to be way out of whack. All right, so let's see where, now the string tension on here, let's see where I'm at. So I'm at, let's see. I'm in between 560 forts and a 16th on the low side. And on the high side, I am right on a 16th. So what does that give me as far as string buzz? Getting a little bit of string buzz on it, so I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. Like I said, I'm in between a sixteenth and five sixty fourths. Let's see if I bring this up a little bit. And so I'm more towards the 564s, and I'm leaving that as at a 16th. Retune. Gotta drop it down. See what I got now. Yeah, so sounds pretty good. Doesn't sound like there's anything dead. Check my relief again to make sure my relief is still where I left it. I'm going to use just a regular 10 mil, or not 10 mil, it would be 0.25 mil, oh, 10 thousandths. That's staying right where it was. Now let's check out the action height at the first fret. So right now I got a 10. And I'm not too crazy. Let's see about what it looks like. Let's go with a 
19 here. I can actually lower the action height a little bit on this. So that's not going to be too bad. I'm going to lower the action height at the nut a little bit because now that I have the neck isn't so straight as it was when I first got the guitar, the action height at the first fret is a little bit higher because I end up putting a little bit of relief in the neck and got the strings where I want them to be as far as action height goes, um, which was on a high side when the strings were, really, when the neck was really, really straight. Um, and when I mean straight, it was like, no relief and ended up turning into a back bow after I took the strings that were on the guitar off. So I'm going to go ahead and get this nut situated over here and lower this action height the first fret. So I've gotten a little bit of a jump start over here. I end up using my action height gauge to measure the height of the first fret. So what I end up doing is putting this flat on top of the wood surface of the fretboard itself zeroing it out and then taking that and putting it on top of the fret to get a reading and then moving that down the fret to see if I get a consistent uh, measurement from high E string to low E string on the fret itself and it's pretty much within a thousandth difference which is not bad and what I'm doing now is basically I've got the low E string cut slotted on the nut where I want it so I've taken the measurement that I got from the gauge. I ended up taking that measurement, writing it down. So it's a 57, 57, 57 thousandths. So I've taken that 57 thousandths, added it to my uh, feeler gauge over here, then add another 18 thousandths to that. That gives me the action height that I want at the first fret. So I should give, give me a 18 thousandths underneath the string on top of the fret. And there's my distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. So I've already got the low E string taken care of. Now what I want to do is start working on the next, uh, the next string and then so on to the high E. Now, I'm going to have to recut the top of this nut because I end up slotting that pretty deep. I know I said in the beginning of the video of a series of videos of all this that the action height at the first fret was pretty good. Well, that's because of a high action and a very straight neck that gave me a pretty decent action at the first fret. Well, now that I've added relief, now that I've changed the action height at the 12th fret, uh, that's given me a higher action over at the first fret. Now I got to change that nut. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the next string down and start cutting this nut slot and giving it to what I need as far as a measurement. Now I want to make sure that this is going towards the string, the post on the tuner. And I'm going to start cutting this very slowly, very evenly and straight down angled towards the headstock. And I should start hearing it scratching the should start here scratching on the feeler gauge. Remove the this is a bone nut, surprisingly. So I don't know if somebody actually changed the nut on this or if that's what the nut was is a bone nut that came with this guitar. I, again I have to check the specs of this. Try not to scratch the top of the headstock while doing this because you're angling it towards the headstock. There you go, I'm starting to hear the scratching on the feeler gauge. That's what I want, so I'm going to go to the next one now.
All right, so what I'm going to do is take a flat pencil. This is just a pencil that is used for like doing construction work and stuff like that. Flattened out the bottom of it, gave it a nice sharp tip going that way, not that way. This side you want completely flat. And what I'm going to do is hold this on the frets, on top of the frets, and go over. Press the nut from left to right, and that's going to show me kind of where I have to cut this nut down in order to get it to have the strings half in the nut and half out of the nut. So I go ahead and get my file. I'm going to start to protect, put something over the headstock to protect it a little bit. start trimming this down so it'll be a little bit shorter and shaped <laughs> So I'm going to start switching over to some of my jeweler files. Let's see which one do I want here. I want the square flat one. This is what I want. Start shaping that now a little bit more. sharp edges on the sides. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is get some sandpaper and start polishing that nut up. Starting off with some 400 grit sandpaper. And what I'm looking for is to get rid of all the scratches from the files. That's what I'm looking for. piece of 600 grit. I'm basically doing the same thing. Now I have a piece of 800 grit. One thousand or fifteen hundred will do it. A little bit of rip. 
carbon compound. of a shine on that nut. Make that thing look like it's brand new. I'm going with the number two ribbon compound right now. Kind of overkill, but out of the slots of the nut. on that getting some of the rubbing compound out of the fretboard over here now oil and a small toothbrush. You should be able to get that out of there. So I'm going to get a clean rag now. Blow off all the dust off this headstock. Remember I have I've got wax on this headstock so rubbing it off is going to be protecting a little bit without causing any issues. scratching the hell out of it. Alright, so let's put the strings back. Puppy up.
All right, so. Oh, much better action height. So let me grab my, I say it was 18,000 shim. Just what I want. 18 thousands right across the board. So let's take you a little in closer. Take a look at, you guys can take a look at my nut. <laughs> All right, so the nut's got a little bit of a gloss to it. String spacing is still the same. Nothing has changed there. And the strings are not sunken into the nut. Just how it's supposed to be. All right, so now that you all got a good look at my nut, let's work on this intonation over here, and then after that, get these pickups set as far as height goes. Kind of anxious to get this thing done and ready for playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing, make sure the tuning is set perfect, and go ahead and hit the all right, so that's got to be moved back a little bit. All right, so we got to retune this thing. That's good. Let me move back a little bit as well. Come on, get in there. There you go. All right. forward a little bit. Right there. Back a little bit. Just a little bit.
Alright. I can go back a little bit. Back a little bit more. All right, that's good. Now I check to see the tailpiece, see if I'm sitting on any of the strings. And then I'm just going to use a piece of paper. And I should be able to slide this underneath all the strings with no problem, and that's good. So let's check the height on the pickups. <coughs> Start off with the base side. Oh yeah. She needs to go up or down. <coughs> and needs to go down. So I need to go down just a little bit. And the treble side. That side needs to go up a little bit. And needs to go down a little bit. Good. Good. Bit. Good. Good. All right. So, as far as that goes, setup is complete. Not bad. Not bad at all.